the Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by IVPN. Use a VPN to help prevent your online activity from becoming a permanent record. IVPN encrypts your data and DNS requests so your ISP or mobile network provider cannot monitor or log your online activity. Purchase an IVPN service today anonymously with Monero. What? Look at that. Hey. <laughs> Hello. How do you do? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Good, good, good. Thanks for jumping on on this Friday night. We appreciate it. Of course, of course. If my camera shuts down in 30 minutes, I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. We got, yeah, that's, that is crazy. Investment advice, tax advice. Yeah, we, we don't offer any of that here. <laughs> this week, it's going to be focused on the US dollar. There's been a lot of things happening um, uh, on that. So we're going to focus mostly on the US dollar. Uh, I have a couple of videos that discuss um, the US dollar's global supremacy erodation. So we're going to watch them in a little bit. Uh, but basically, so the dollar has been the dominant uh, financial tool of the world. But now um, other countries are trying to destabilize it, like Brazil, uh, Russia, China, and uh, South Africa. So it's going to be very interesting in the next couple of months what is going to happen and how it's going to affect America. And I think... The whole point is to destroy the dollar just to introduce the CBDC. I think that's what it comes to. So let's watch this video from CNN. Here's my take. Which um, is actually very interesting coming from CNN. We'll watch uh, the first minute of it. Here's my take. The most interesting outcome of the three-day summit between Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping got limited media attention. Describing their talks, Putin said, we are in favor of using the Chinese yuan for settlements between Russia and the countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. So, the world's second largest economy and its largest energy exporter are together actively trying to dent the dollar's dominance as the anchor of the international financial system. Will they succeed? The dollar is America's last surviving superpower. It gives Washington unrivaled economic and political muscle. It can slap sanctions on countries unilaterally, which frees that country out of large parts of the world economy. And Washington can spend freely, certain that its debt will be bought up by the rest of the world. The war against Ukraine, combined with Washington's increasingly confrontational approach to China, have created a perfect storm in which both Russia and China are accelerating efforts to diversify away from the dollar. Their central banks are keeping less of their reserves in dollars, and most trade between them is being settled in the yuan. They are also making efforts to get other countries to follow suit. The Biden administration... So, um, it's very interesting that countries like China and... Um, Russia are not are no longer holding as much uh, dollars, but they're trying to sway away from it, and they're trying to settle uh, transactions between themselves. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we're seeing the the flip happen, right? Like it was, yes. it was theoretical, but it's it's Russia and China are making moves. They're pouncing, big big moves, big yeah. moves. And then, um, so we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Yeah, but um, so they're going to they want to create their own currency. And that currency is going to be backed by actual metals like gold. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really destabilizing and it's going to be uh, very interesting to see. Now let's watch um, a minute of this video as well. Actually, I'll play a little bit in the beginning and then at the end. Um, so let's do that. Mayor Putin announced this week that Russia will begin using the Chinese yuan uh, to, for international payments instead of the dollar. Saudi Arabia is also in talks with Beijing to do the same thing. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, meanwhile, they are in talks uh, with Iran as well to consider an economic alliance with China in Russia. And they can even be joining the BRIC countries, which is an acronym for these countries here, Bra uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. These countries all have emerging economies. So 
what happens if our economy and the U.S. dollar are no longer the world's do dominant currency? Former Assistant Treasury Secretary. Then let's skip uh, to the end. I want to show you guys um, one thing. Global right. economic system. Here at home, you know what it's going to mean for us? It's going to be raging inflation, so much worse than anything we have ever experienced will. Yeah. And I'll tell you, they're setting it up so that they can then come to the rescue by introducing central bank digital currencies. Right. If they were to do that, and the United States already has a pilot program, that means the loss of your individual economic freedom because the government will have total access and control of everything you buy and sell and the ability to turn it off like wow. that ominous warning i hear you saudi arabia is the tip great i i, I it's just crazy that it's it's mainstream right that's yes such, exactly such mainstream conversation right now um like it's it's literally the best marketing we could possibly have for monero it's it's they're like one sentence away from from saying it Right, so they're, they're opening people's eyes to the fact that they're about to potentially lose the, all any semblance of financial privacy they've already had. They're explaining to people why financial privacy is so important and so vital to our freedom and liberty. Like all those conversations are going to take place, and you know, people are worried about the CBDC as being the thing that's effectively going to do that. What's the solution? True cryptos, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you start to go go down the list of which cryptos actually would truly preserve your financial privacy the most, you arrive at Monero. So I mean, it's we're getting close, man. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know when if it's like another year, or how much longer, but Monero is going to be discussed on CNN, on Fox, on all, like it's yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close. I think so. Eventually, I think so as well. I mean, I never thought I would never think the CBDC conversation would be where it, where it's already at at this point. Like that that happened really fast for it to be. I, I think I feel like it went it came fast, right? Things are yeah. faster than than I expected. I think the same. And I was watching this video, and I was actually gonna pause it for minutes because I kind of understood what they were talking about. And then I watched until the end, and then she said CBDCs. That's what they want, um, and it's going to take away your freedoms. And I think that's really interesting that they're playing that on fox news mm -hmm. so um yeah I, don't, I think they're going to discuss monero you know in the next one two years as soon as cbdc's come i think that we're gonna hear monero on the news um now let's play another video on the u.s dollar the federal reserve knows the dollar is finished i mean honest to god um if I could speak about maybe something I've heard at some point, maybe from something reputable, maybe, maybe not. You never know. I'm just going to throw something out there that I heard that the BRIC nations want off the dollar and they're going to do it August 1st of this year. So they have their own version of the SWIFT system, an international payment system that will run everything but the dollar. And joining that list is Saudi Arabia. This is big. China's on that list. Russia's on that list. Brazil is on that list. You know, Thailand's on that list. There's a lot of countries that are tired of the dollar and they want off. Okay. Um, yes, I think it's going to be a very scary time because um, the dollar has been used so strongly and now um, it's very smart uh what russia and china and all these countries are doing by destabilizing the dollar and sort of decentralizing the financial uh power in a way of course it's not the way that we would want it to be um but it's taking away a lot of power from from the us yeah i mean they're they're competing you know that these just like citizens lose out from the fiat system other countries lose out from America's fiat system, right? It, it doesn't yes. just take advantage of of the citizens here. It takes advantages of other countries as well. This ability mm -hmm. to control the money uh, and print more at will and mm -hmm. have an infinite supply of essentially the, the world reserve currency. 
And so, you know, it's just a matter of time. You know, other other mm-hmm. countries never wanted that. Just, just never had the ability to to overcome the U.S. But apparently, they're you know they're they're at a point in time where it seems like they they do have that ability to do so. They're teaming up and they're they're seeing what they can do. And it, it all has to do with the crypto evolution too, right? So we're just in this world mm-hmm. where, where money is competing, right? We're in that that mm-hmm. period of time where we're seeing competition between money and we'll see which which money wins mm-hmm. Crazy. Sure. yeah yeah so I think competing too with their cbdc's it's not just crypto right everybody's competing so each mm-hmm. each one's going to affect each other i you know i've said i think the the end result is going to be this you know cbdc's are going to exist alongside true cryptos for some time uh, yes transition beyond that and I, th- I do think CBDCs, in order to compete, are going to offer features that, you know, uh, will attract people, right? Mm-hmm. So they're, they're obviously, they're going to be doing things that uh, aren't ideal in terms of preserving liberty, but they're going to be offering features that, that people may want to have in their money uh, mm-hmm. without revealing what the, you know, the bad parts are, right? But mm-hmm. like, look at, like you said, look at, I mean, we could very well see a um, a CBDC issued by right, like Russia and China teamed up, right, and with Saudi Arabia yes. and others. That is backed by gold. I mean, that's yes. that's a feature, yeah. right? That that competes. Like, what do you rather own? You rather own a fiat U.S. dollar that's not backed by anything, or you want the CBDC that's that's backed by gold, right? All right, so there's mm-hmm. some trust involved with. You know whether or not they actually you know ha- have the gold in their reserves but it's better it's better than what fiat currently is right it's yes up in the right direction so i mean it, it's going to compete crazy and this has been planned for a long time i think because last year putin when everybody decided to push russia away from the financial system what did putin do he said okay well the rubble is not doing good right now but what we're going to do is that we're going to back the rubble by gold. So then if you want to settle anything with us, if you want to purchase anything with us, you can pay in rubles to strengthen our currency or by gold. And then they they hoarded a lot of gold by doing so. And in this article, it says um, that the new currency would be secured by gold and other commodities such as rare earth elements. And like Doug said, what do you what currency do you want? Do you want the US dollar, the CBDC US dollar backed by probably nothing? Or do you want the Chinese, the Russian CBDC backed by a rare earth element? So um, I think by now, CBDC, everybody should know that CBDCs are coming. And again, like Doug said, it's going to be CBDCs alongside crypto. Um, For how long? I'm not sure. But the thing is, they're going to make CBDCs in such a way that it's like with the dollar. People are not going on the streets protesting about inflation. Because most people are aware about inflation, but not, they don't know that it, how bad it really is. But I think with CBDCs, one once they see the negative interest rates that they need to spend their money, and then oh, I can buy this. Why can't I buy this? I think we're gonna see more protests when CBDCs come. I'm not sure how they're gonna hide um, their surveillance system with the CBDCs. Uh, but it's very interesting. So, you know, essentially, uh, Russia is going to have its own CBDC, China is going to have its own CBDC, and they're going to have a gateway to transact between each other so without needing the US dollar, which is um, revolutionary, destabilizing, and scary for people that work for US dollars, like me and uh, Doug and Sunita and people that are watching. Um, but then what I want to discuss is, um, let's see, let's go back to, yeah, let's discuss a bill. This is bill S 600 and 686. So this bill, essentially, if you use VPN to access banned apps, which could be, they talked about TikTok, you know, could be, I don't know, Monero wallet. Like, let's say that they found out that you got a Monero wallet minimum. No, no, actually, it's actually maximum, a maximum 20 year sentence. And I think up to $1 million um, in fine. 
which is crazy. And all these things are done so that you, um, you feel more safe. They do it for, uh, you know, to protect ourselves from terrorists, but you're just being put in a smaller and smaller and smaller cage with every single legislation that they put in just to protect you because you need someone else to protect you. And like Dan uh, from taxation said, um, you know, are you, you won't have your pants on when you walk on the streets, you know, you don't want them to be down to your ankles. Um, and like your house, you want to have walls in your house. You, you want some level of privacy. Not everything should be transparent, you know, cameras in the bathroom to make sure that people are not, you know, I don't know, exchanging over $10,000 because that's going to be illegal or, you know, doing drugs and stuff like that. Um, so interesting. Very interesting. That was, that was the bill to ban one of the bills proposed to ban TikTok, right? And they basically wrote it up in such a broad way that it's effectively banning, you're saying, usage of VPN and stuff? Yes. So I haven't read the whole legislation, um, but I think that's what it's trying to imply that, you know, if you're trying to access things that they banned up to 20 years, you know, so they make sure that you are not going to, um, to access things that they don't want you to access, of course, to protect you because you need to be protected. Um, then what I want to mention is that all, all these things seem related, right? Like, uh, yeah. the operation choke point, which everybody's talking about, which is basically cutting crypto off from the traditional banking system. Right. So mm -hmm. making it difficult for crypto businesses to exist, like exchanges and stuff that want to interface with the traditional banking system. Mm -hmm. The rise of CBDCs um, and regulations and laws that are putting that are being put into place that could allow governments to wield control over over crypto, right? Mm -hmm. And start to ban things. They, yeah. you say it's it's not a coincidence that all these things are happening at the same time. This is how no. you corral people. This is how it happens. Exactly, it's been planned for a long time. Yeah. And it's kind of sad that, you know, we have this thing called cryptocurrency that was supposed to be a revolution, but there's only really one that is really helping the revolution. All of them are not really, uh, they're just surveillance tools. Uh, but yeah, people use Monero also for bad things. And I do want to mention that it's not, it's not all just flowers, you know, uh, people use it for good things. People use it for bad things. There's this pro ISIS website. Uh, hosted in French Pacific Islands, a fundraise using Monero. So, yeah, fortunately, these are the types of things that will be pointed out as to why this this tool needs to be banned, right? Which is analogous mm -hmm. to wanting to ban the internet because bad things happen on the internet. <laughs> but that's not that's not how people are going to view it, and that's not how the government is going to pitch it. Yeah. And so it's it's really important that we continue to get the proper information. It's an information war because at the end yes. of the day, if enough people are ethically aligned with it because they truly understand with it, then you know if this you know at least in the U.S. if this republic democracy actually functions, then oh. we win in, in that manner, right? And mm -hmm. these draconian laws aren't passed. And then second is if they even if they are. Uh, that crypto just is built in such a way that it can't be stopped. But mm -hmm. it looks like as part of all these other things we're talking about, this chokehold on crypto, mm -hmm. you know, this, this is going to be, you know, one of the talking points. Mm -hmm. Crypto is used for financing terrorism. When I ran for Congress, I, I, I told you that story, right? I got sent a, oh, my, everybody that donated to my campaign got sent a letter to their house with the picture of me on it from my campaign and uh, next side by side with the picture of the Taliban with machine guns in a pickup truck. Oh yes. And, I remember Jesus. Uh, Monero Monero is used to fund terrorism. Doug Tooman supports terrorism is essentially what they said. And there, you know, we, uh, you donated to his campaign. You, you know, if you don't, if you don't donate it again, you won't be hearing from us, but if you do, you will. So it was a threatening letter to every single person that donated to my campaign with this picture of the Taliban on the of it holding guns and so. So I mean, if if they're coming if they were coming after me to to that regard, uh, mm -hmm. 
in that regard just i mean it just just shows you right so it's it's gonna yes. happen um which is why i ran right because i i think we we need people to stand up for it yes like we always say right it's 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 unstoppable it's built to be resistant to bands uh that's the only way it's gonna work that's the yes. cypherpunk ideology but we also need to you know we need to fight this war in 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 more than one way right so it's it's not just about building unstoppable tech but we need to to fight the war politically as well because it can be one i mean america uh monero completely ideal uh, aligns with what the true ideals are supposed to be for the for this country but somebody needs to be out there fighting this we're starting to see it. we're starting to see with the cbdc's we're starting to see sure. you know ron DeSantis talking talking against cbdc's and some of these other you know congressmen and senators so i don't know maybe we get somebody to step up and and make these arguments but and just to tell people just to give you some background so the day that dog told me that story we were in miami and that same day using monero we purchased coconut water uh, we tip some people with Monero, we purchased stuff with Monero. So nothing, you know, no terrorism involved. Um, that's that's insane. And, you know, it's unfortunate that, that these things happen, but um, yeah. Um, so now let's talk about um, the U European Banking Federation and their vision about digital Euro. They're saying that they want to create value for end customers and the economy. They want to preserve financial stability and bank funding, of course, a uh, robust business model to incentivize uh, blah, blah, and balances design choices to safeguard privacy and e enable the fulfillment of compliance requirements. So we have privacy and enable the fulfillment of compliance uh, requirements while allowing intermediate intermediaries to process customers' payment data based on customers' consent to provide value-added services. Okay, so basically, you're not gonna have privacy, <laughs> essentially. You can transact, uh, but if there's something that they don't like, they can, of course, turn off your privacy and they can see it and they can do um, whatever you want. But um, we talked about last week about how um, the situation with Fluffy Pony, it, there's no, single central attack point on monero you know if fluffy pony fluffy pony doesn't even have access to the code anymore so it doesn't matter what happens to an individual monero is going to thrive we're going to have monero to use against these things and it's going to protect your privacy no matter what or your isis or just like a regular person which is the most important thing um then i want to discuss oh yeah let's go to this one actually um EU to ban anonymous crypto transfers of over 1,000 euro. So what they want to do, they want to set a limit to 7,000 euro for cash and 1,000 for anonymous cryptocurrency transfers. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so... This is crazy. Yeah. This is insane. So you can't even buy a car, almost, or some stuff like that, you know? Like you need to use your, your card. You can't use cash. It, you know, how exactly do they intend on, on banning anonymous crypto transactions over $1,000? How, how exactly is, is that going to happen? I know. That's what I was thinking. I mean, for and cash too, right? Yeah. How are they, how, how do they exactly. intend on doing that? Yeah. The one is more ridiculous than the next. I'd say that the crypto one is even harder to, to, to stop, right? I mean, in digital form... People just on the internet will be zapping each other any amount they want using Monero. Um, and they could be doing it within the jurisdiction of the EU. And I just exactly. don't see how they would ever manage to, you know, uh, effectively ban. And Monero protects your IP as well. So you can't even see that it was <laughs> done in the European Union. And you can't even see the amount. So again, a thousand euro cap for anonymous cryptocurrency transfers that doesn't make any sense and for and this, is, this is exactly what we were talking about right I, I haven't read this but i assume the reason they're doing this is to prevent the financing of terrorism and money laundering right yep right there yep <laughs> it's always the same thing yeah <laughs> it's always the same 
<laughs> like, how do you argue against that? Like, you, yeah. you can't, guys. I mean, in their eyes, you can't. Obviously, there are arguments against it, but they don't yeah. want to hear it. So Crazy. this doesn't make this doesn't even make any sense. Uh, but then I have two more stuff, and then that's it for this week. All right. um, let's talk about Bitcoin and IPs. So in Monero, you can't track a user's IP address. Um, you're protected against um, like your IP is protected. Um, the sender, the receiver, the amount, everything. So nobody knows everything. Uh, but reportedly, there's an entity that uses a range of 812 different IP addresses to obscure its identity while collecting data on Bitcoin users and their IP address, like where they actually um, where they live. So you can do that with Monero. You can read the article. Uh, all the links are going to be in the description if you want to read the whole thing. Uh, but you can do that with uh, Monero, and that's very unfortunate that um, that is happening in, in Bitcoin. Um, then, last thing that I want to mention, Cake Wallet, uh, Mac OS, it's out of uh, beta as of now. So uh, get it, test it, try it out. For the people watching on YouTube, here's the screenshot. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure if it's in Windows as of now. I think it's just Mac OS. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, so just to end the news section, I want to mention two things. One, monerotopia.com, as always. <laughs> buy tickets. You're uh, good at this, man. You're good. We're, we're not good at promoting ourselves. You're good at it. Great tickets. Thank you. Yeah, to card. Then, guys, you uh, view card. Tony. <laughs> Tony! <laughs> And I Whoa. saved nine anonymous dollars if you pay. percent off with Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Beautiful. And we uh, added a libertarian one with 20% off. Sorry, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> can you make mine like 21%? <laughs> 21%. <laughs> All right, we can do that. We'll do that. No, 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 no. no. It's okay. 21% but... off if you use Tony. You heard it here. Until tomorrow. Can you, can you change, do can the you link. That? I don't know. Yeah. Can't you just change it? No. Takes the site. Takes right, the site. Let's again, take the weekend to, within the next twenty four hours. What? Twenty four hours? Yeah, we could change. We could change the Tony one, so it's uh, twenty one percent. Twenty one percent off. Okay. All right, guys, Top. you heard it. Twenty one percent for the next twenty four hours. And the last thing that I want to mention for the new section is that um, it's so interesting to go over the CBDC's news. And month by month, we're coming closer and closer and closer. And one day, we're going to do a new section. And we're going to discuss the CBDC now, like actually living through it. Yeah, we'll be so, using it, right? We'll be using it. Yeah. That's going to be crazy. And I think that's in the and next two years. We'll be figuring out how we're swapping it for Monero. <laughs> <laughs> CBC to Monero atomic swaps. <laughs> Live. That'll be crazy. Coming soon, guys. Minerotopia 2025. That'll be wild. Absolutely wild.